In this video, we're going to take a look at completing the square. Now, completing the, the square can be used whenever we have an equation that's in the form of x squared, oops, x squared plus bx. So, uh, we can make that into a perfect square, and that will allow us to solve or find the solution of an equation find the the roots or find the um, zeros depending on if we're working with functions or equations so x squared plus bx that's the form we have to have what we're gonna do is add b over 2 squared to both sides of our equation and what's gonna happen is it's going to factor out to be x plus b over 2 and that's squared so we're completing the square we're making it so that the function or the equation is going to factor into something that's a perfect square from there we can use the square roots to solve so let's go ahead and take a look at this first one in this first one our first step is to get all the variable stuff on one side and the constants on the other side so we've got that situation already then we're gonna add b over 2 squared to both sides well b is the piece that's with the x so that's 10 so we have 10 over 2 which would be 10 divided by 2 is 5 and then we square that that's gonna give us 25 so we're going to add 25 to both sides of our equation here. So it's going to become x squared plus 10x plus 25 equals 20 plus 25. Okay, then this should factor into something that's a perfect square. Well, let's see. I'm going to take the long way here, but we'll see what happens. I look at this, it's going to break into two things. It's a trinomial first term is going to be x because I got to get that x squared then the signs are going to be plus because this is plus so I look at this one they're both plus so x plus factors of 25 that add up to 10 well that would be x plus 5 and x plus 5 huh sure enough so I have and over here I end up with 45 then I'm going to combine those so I have x plus 5 squared oops x plus 5 squared and that's going to be equal to 45 then to solve that I'm going to take the square root of both sides so square root here square root here it's going to give me x plus 5 is equal to the square root of 45 well that's not a perfect square but I can do some simplification I can break that up into the square root of 9 times the square root of 5 Oops, my tablets not working with me very well here times the square root of 5 the square root of 9 would be 3 so I have x plus 5 is equal to 3 times the square root of 5 I can't simplify that any further then finally what I need to do oops one thing don't forget when you take the square root we need to have the positive and the negative values so it's plus minus so it's plus or minus 3 plus or minus coming down here then solve this for x I'm gonna subtract 5 from both sides so my solution is going to be x equals negative 5 I subtracted 5 from both sides and I'm just gonna put it first plus or minus 3 square root of 5 okay so by completing the square I could solve using those square roots let's take a look at this next one here for this one we don't have the variable stuff by itself we need to get that constant over there first so I'm gonna add 23 in this case to both sides to get it so I have it in that x squared plus bx form 
So then I have x squared minus 6x equals 23. Okay. Now I'm going to add b over 2 squared. Well, in this case, b is negative 6. So negative 6 over 2 that would be negative 3. I'm going to square it, so I'm going to add 9 to both sides. So I have x squared plus, minus 6x plus 9. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, add 9. So 23 plus 9 over there. Simplify. This is going to factor into that perfect square thing. We can hop right to this point right here where we have the b over 2. In this case, it's going to be minus 3 squared equals 23 plus 9. Well, that would be 32. Okay, then we're going to take square roots to solve. So square root of both sides. Remember, we want plus or minus. So we have x minus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 32. Well, 32 is not a perfect square, but I can break that up. What can I break it up into? Well, square root of 16 plus or minus square root of 16 times the square root of 2. So then, finally, I'm going to get that x by itself. So add 3 to both sides. Add 3. Then I have x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of 16. Well, that's 4 times the square root of 2. We have two solutions there, and typically we're going to want to leave them in that square root form because otherwise we start losing accuracy. We don't want to lose accuracy. Okay, so let's try one more. This one we've got x stuff over here, x stuff over here, a constant over there. Yikes. Okay, so what we need to do is get the 13 on the other side, so we're going to subtract 13, and at the same time, just to save space here, I'm going to add 14x to both sides as well. I'm going to add 14x. That's going to get my x's together. So now I have x squared plus 14x, and that's going to be equal to negative 13. Okay, now back to my completing the square. This is in that form, x squared plus bx. So I'm going to add b over 2 squared to both sides. So my b in this case is 14 over 2. 14 divided by 2 is 7. Well, 7 squared would be 49. So I'm going to add 49 to both sides. And remember, I can do that because if we do the same thing on both sides of an equation, then it's still equal, still the same equation. All right, let's get that out of there. I think I need to look at fixing my pen here. Plus 49, going to do the same thing on the other side. Negative 13 plus 49. Like so, Ooh, squishing it in there. Okay, then we go ahead and factor that. We know what's going to factor into x plus, well, what was our b over 2? b over 2 was 14 divided by 2, which is 7. So x plus 7 squared, and that's going to be equal to negative 13 plus 49. Well, let's see, we're 13 in the hole, so that's going to be 36. Okay. Then, take the square roots of both sides, like so, and we have x plus 7 equals the square root of 36. Huh. That is a perfect square. Perfect. 6. So plus or minus 6. Okay. And in this case, I'm going to subtract 7, subtract 7, and I'm going to get some actual numbers here. Well, some nice numbers maybe. Negative 7 plus or minus 6, well, that would give us 7. Negative 7 plus 6 would be negative 1. Negative 7 minus 6 would be negative 13 is my other solution. So let me clean that up just a little bit there. So negative 1 and then negative 13. Completing the square. We need to get first the quadratic into 
x squared plus bx form so get the variable stuff all together make sure that that x squared term it has a coefficient of one in these this case all of ours that we looked at did so we didn't have to worry too much there then we're gonna add b over two squared to both sides remember b is the coefficient of the x term then it's going to break up and it's going to factor into a perfect square. From there we can take the square roots. Remember plus or minus when we're taking the square root and we get our solutions. I hope this was helpful. Keep working hard on your math.